Uh, so my name's Owen. A lot of you seem to be interested in the Internet of Things. Uh, I used to work at the next web. I work at a company called Crew now. I have the shortest Twitter handle you'll probably see here at the event today. It's just at OW. Uh, <laughs> uh, ask me about that later. I didn't get it from the start. Uh, so with me today is uh, John Troutman from Canary, uh, who's in charge of, well, Chief Creative Officer, I think was the uh, title. Uh, Lionel, I can't say your last name, Pelé, close enough. Uh, GM of Europe at Nest, so kind of a big deal. And Winneke, and I'm going to fail at this because I'm a New Zealander and not Dutch, but I'm going to try. Uh, Heisman? Almost. Yeah, almost. Okay, so uh, he's joining us from the Things Network. Uh, now, I just want to like quickly do a round of like hands. Who actually owns an internet-connected gadget at home already? Like light bulbs, canary, nest. Okay, so actually quite a lot of you. Interesting. So it's really interesting for me because I'm quite a, a quite a sucker for uh, the Internet of Things. I've bought quite a few of the light bulbs and the the thermostat and all this stuff. So let's just get into it. I, I've I've got all this stuff, but nothing works together. Like I've got an app for Canary. I've got an app for Nest. I've got an app for Tato. What's up with that? <laughs> yeah, I mean it's the obvious place to start when you're building a, a hardware product is to. Uh, is to also build an app to connect it with. And we're just not, I mean, we're not at the point yet where, where there's one system that's going to connect right. it all together. Um, and uh, honestly, I mean, I don't think we need to be at that point yet. Right. We're very early in the industry, and if you try to connect it all too soon, uh, it seems to be jumping the gun a little bit. Interesting. <laughs> I, I think that when you look at the, at the products, I mean, the view we, we've always had was like, you need to create great products, and that's both the hardware, the software, as Johnny is saying, the cloud services and all that. But they need to exist by themselves in right. a certain way and do something that's relevant. Now, if it's a product that is just connected, I mean, we can get back to that, but it's just connected. It doesn't do very much, right? At the end of it, if you just think that you bring the internet to your fridge or whatever, then, then that's not a great paradigm to solve. Then after how you bridge it together, the question is really the user being in the middle, how you make it easy for him to, to bridge that and what's the the road, the path to get to this, and what are the technologies to enable that? You don't want a consumer to start to be to create an IT department in his home to make it all work together, right? right? right. So it's it's like B two G, right? Business to geeks versus mm -hmm. business to consumers in a certain right, way, right. right? So, but but I think there is a path until at some point where products will be connectable together. And that's why, you know, unless we work on open thread and, and these type of things to just bridge those products together, but create the experience is is not just the app. There's a lot that happened in the background yep. and that will happen in the background in the future. Right, right, interesting. And you've, so you, Winka, you've been working on a thing called the Things Network. Uh, and that's, that's basically, uh, I guess you're behind that. Uh, the initiator, I think you said. Yes. Can you explain to us a little bit what that is? It's kind of like almost unifying it, sort of. Yeah, it's, uh, it's unifying the, the data layer, so how, you, how things talk to each other. And uh, what we have done is we have, are building a global network of Internet of Things gateways, which are owned by the users themselves, but creating a global network with that. So now you have, for instance, a gateway of, uh, of Nest. Um, the gateway we produce is a gateway not only for you, but also for your entire neighborhood. So, uh, it's open, and we'll make sure that it's very secure because there's end-to-end -end encryption per our application. So that's, that's somehow what we do. And I can highly relate to what's happening right now is that there's, there, there are uh, silos of applications because we want to make something work. And probably it's going to gradually move to, to, to standards, like you say, like Thread. Uh, Philips Hue is opening its gateway. Maybe Nest is opening it as well. And then you get these data flowing between each other. And then you get like all kinds of new use cases. Interesting, interesting. It, I mean, I also think it really depends on what, your, what, the, what, you, what job you want these devices right. to perform. And there's, a, there's a, a, you know, a big handful of connected home devices or IoT devices that you don't really need to interact with the hardware. Right. Um, a, a, and you don't even need to interact with so software for it either. And when we talk about light bulbs or things like that, it's, um, you basically need to plug it in, set it up, mm -hmm. and then just let it do its job. Right. Um, and that's where it comes with you know, automation devices and things like this. You just set them up. And you don't really need an app. You don't really need to, to interact with the, pro with the hardware. And for those sort of things, it makes a lot of sense to say, let's find a centralized app or, or uh, network to just have them all work together and then set them and forget them. And then there's on the other side, there's connected products where the experience actually is with the software, right. where you set up the product and, um, and you actually, you, you, once you plug in and set up the hardware, 
then in order for it to add value, you actually have to have an app cool. that actually delivers a value. And in this way, you actually have, and Canary's in this boat, where the hardware is necessary, but in a lot of ways, you're a software company. Mm. And it's the software and the experience that you're creating that makes the product valuable. Right. So that's really interesting, because I, I think that one of the, I guess from my perspective, I have this Nest uh, thing, and I have all this other stuff, and I keep reading about how there's like some security breach, or like some person's house got fried. I, I have a Tado, and like my house got to 30 degrees. I'm sure at least one other person can relate here. Like, is security and re reliability kind of like at risk, but like a, an afterthought for a lot of these companies? Like, would you say that we're in this like adolescent kind of phase of Internet <laughs> of Things right now, where we're still figuring it out? Because I think that because there's no common platform with forgetting about these fundamentals. What, what would you, what would you say to that? Is there a security problem, or? Well, well at first, I like the, that you said, are we in an adolescent phase of, of IoT yeah. or connected home? I actually think we're in like, we're still like in embryo. Right. It's like so <laughs> early. Even before and, that. Yeah, and, and Gary um, Vanacek was just in in the on the stage talking about um, uh, the internet and the consumer internet and how even 20 years in we're still like at the very beginning of the consumer internet. And I thought that was a really good point that he made. Mm. And then when you think of IoT or connected home, we're, we're like, what, a few years into it. And so we're so like in the infancy of what's happening here mm -hmm. that uh, is security an afterthought for a lot of companies. Sure, a lot of things, <laughs> it's so experimental right now in what, sure. in what products are being built and companies are doing in IoT that um, some of them, the, uh, the risk for not having security be top of mind and like thought of from the very beginning is very, very high. Sure. And other products that are just maybe more hacker products and things that aren't going to yeah. have as much personal information. I, I would relate to what John said. I think in our range, we got safety products, right? Or security products or related to that notion and also related to the notion of your, your home. Right. And home is probably the most private place you have on earth. It's probably your, your largest investment is where your family lives and it's very private. If you're a guest invited for dinner, you behave well, you probably won't come again, right? So right. I think it's the same for the way we think about the products and how we bring the products into the home. I think you need to be really harsh on yourself about what could be the worst case scenario? What could really happen? What's what's creepiness, right? From a scale of zero to 10, mm. w where do you want to put that there? <laughs> and I think is applying in the same way. I mean, we design our products like we design smartphones, right? So they have an operating system, they yeah. have thread, we use this M2M machines and Wi-Fi. But as soon as you, you use connectivity, why not like leveraging best practices that there are in the industry? Is it what everybody does? Probably not today, but is it you know, best practice and taking privacy and security, which are two different problems, really seriously, I think there is a need to. Especially, I mean, especially for us in the home. Sure. Um, w we just have to, otherwise you, you just don't exist, right? Yeah, it reminds me of uh, the, I think a couple of weeks ago, one company had a doorbell where if you opened the app, you were seeing other people's doors and like that's, that's your nightmare, right? Like you On don't scale of that. creepy, is like 10, right? Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like a 10. I don't want to see yeah. some random dude in I New Zealand's door. Yeah, yeah, this example of this uh, baby camera search engine that came at Oh, yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I think like journalism like that is, is so good for awareness. Uh, it, it really makes clear like, like what the applications are doing. Um, and um, so I think that's really positive and, and it also needs to be a signal to every developer to, to build these applications uh, secure from the ground up. We, 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 we are now, internet is around for 30 years. Yeah. We have made a lot of mistakes. We can learn a lot from that. Now we're extending that internet to the internet of things. Um, uh, and and it, as I think it's what you see, so for instance, technology we're using as encryptions uh, layers on, and on the transport and the payload. Yeah. You probably have it as well. So that comes very aware. And then it comes back to the privacy, which is actually a contract between the application developer yeah and a user. Mm -hmm. And and then you're entering this new domain of privacy, which is also another discussion. So that's, that was going to be my next you know, question, I guess, yeah. is like privacy and data is, is kind of fundamental to the Internet of Things, right? Like half of the Internet of Things selling point is the data that you can, data that you can gather. And one of my concerns as a, I guess, a home gadget buyer is, am I the product or can I pay you? And I think, so Canary's really interesting because uh, it's one of the few products, I think, where you can already pay a monthly fee uh, for the to keep getting the video stuff. So, like, what is all that IoT data good for? And am I the product, or is it kind of like a two-way contract? How do you how do you see the privacy aspect of, I guess, being in the home and collecting that data? Do you use it for good, or do you sell it to other people as well? 
<laughs> I mean, I don't <laughs> know what Google does, but um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, actually, what, what Lionel said, I think, is right on. Like, it's if you're building something for the home, you have to rec recognize how uh, what an intimate and sort of almost sacred place the mm. home is, right? <laughs> and so you, I, I love the metaphor you use of like you're an invited guest in the home, and you have to see do you do, do you want to stay invited or do you want to be kicked out of that home? Um, and and I think that we have if you're building anything for the connected home, you have not only a responsibility to the user mm. but also to the rest of the industry. That you know any of these breaches you hear about for us, we're, we're kind of insiders and we. We um, we can understand well. Oh, they didn't implement this, but the rest of the industry like yeah. that is, is okay. But for an average consumer, you hear about a breach like with the doorbell thing that you yeah. mentioned, or, or any of these other ones, and it really harms how quickly our industry can grow. Sure. Because you know it just damages the consumer trust in the whole uh, connected home space at large. So privacy has to be uh, very top of mind. And, and data. I, I'll, I'll go back to your question of, <laughs> are you like who's the product or what's the yeah. product? Um, W d data is sort of like information that hasn't been uh, made meaningful yet, right? Yeah. So like a product like Canary, like we're co collecting lots of data about the home that we're in, right? And it comes from the, it's sensor data, temperature, humidity, air quality, it's being gathered. It's video data, mm -hmm. um, it's data of, you know, how often users are, or people are home in their homes or when they leave. Um, but it's not meaningful until you do something with it. And right. so our, our goal is really to take that data and then try to analyze it in a way that we can feed it back to the user to provide meaning and value. Yeah. Um, certainly not to take that data and see if you can make sure. money off of it. It's to say, what value can we provide to our users to then offer services around, those, around that value and that's really where the product comes in, where the right. I guess, business model comes. And Owen, back to your earlier point about like the connectivity between different products, is yeah. also like how you can use intelligently the types of data that are captured across devices. Now, when you start to think this way, you really think also about privacy and security in the same way. Right. Like not just like the terms of use that you see like when you want to upgrade to iOS whatever version yeah. and then you scroll like 20 pages <laughs> and you say I accept because yes, yes. You, you just want the upgrade anyway. <laughs> but you don't quite know. And, yeah. and I think it's how you make it very explicit for the customer, very clear as well. So there is how you formulate it and, and, and say what you do and do what you say. But it's also like when we create a Nest that works with Nest developer program, yep. which is now what, 17,000 developers. Wow. It was really the premise of like with the API, share some statuses, but anonymously and, and also encrypted about the status of certain device, which could be the temperature, could be humidity, could be presence, could be absence. But as soon as you start about likelihood to be present and absent, mm. you, your, your head is like going, oh yeah, that's, that's even more private, that's even more confidential, so I need to encrypt everything at three layers of encryption. <laughs> I can't have trailing data for more than X days, and it needs to be anonymous. But back to your question, who's who owns the data? I think it's, it's the user, but you need to make it relevant, a use case, a benefit. Mm. Otherwise, it's, it's, it's just no one's. But at the end, this is customer's yeah. data. Uh, and right. you need to expose to the customer very clearly, I think, uh, what, what you do with it. And what's the benefit, if anything. Mm. Can't sell, can't, can't rent. I mean, you mentioned Google. I mean, even for us, it's even more, right? Because we're right. part of Google, although we're separate. But sure. we're, we exactly separate the two businesses, and we, it just we want to. Yeah, and I imagine that's, a bit, that's an important topic, I imagine, where you all have uh, to absolutely. It has make to. It's clear that this is a separate thing. It has right. to be. And I think that transparency is the most important thing. So again, it's, it's, it, you, you, you engage in a contract with an application developer, and then you share this information because it will generate value for you. Uh, and the most thing, uh, I think important thing is that you just be very clear what you do with the data. And uh, one of the uh, partners of the hack battle that was here is the, the Data Transparency Lab. Mm -hmm. They're creating this also these tools to analyze apps to see what's happening with the data, trace mm -hmm. it. I think that, that type of uh, consciousness by users, mm -hmm. that it's also their responsibility and to be aware of that and also to go after that, it's, I think that's, that's a shared Thing, um. Yeah, and device makers or, or um, companies that are building these devices, I think we also have a big, obviously we have a responsibility to build it in a way that, uh, that, t that puts this um, right at the forefront at the beginning, but then also to continue to sort of invite scrutiny of our products. Um, like one thing we do at Canary is we actually invite white, uh, white hat hackers in oh to come wow. and actually try to break into our, yeah. uh, our product. Nice. Uh, and we took it to DEF CON, which is a big hacker conference right. in. Um, Las Vegas this year, and they had a, uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, they had a um, uh, sort of a uh, 
two-day, or I, actually it was a four-day wor workshop set up where it was like a bunch of connected home products in a room, and they invited all the hackers from the conference. Anyone wants to come by, <laughs> try to break these products, like try to get into yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so we put Canary in that, and, and we're just like sweating it out for yeah. four days, like, oh, man. <laughs> but kind of hoping they maybe find something that could like point you in a direction to, to fix. Um, I have to say, luckily, like they didn't find anything with Ooh. Canary. We're nice. like, we made it. And so, <laughs> but it's not, it doesn't end there, right? Because there's always new things, and you have to really stay on top of it. And you have a big, huge responsibility to do that. Interesting. So I guess one other thing that you've all done recently is you've gone global, right? So Canary's rolling out globally right now. Yep. Uh, Nest has kind of just swamped Europe. I'm sure everybody here has noticed that they just popped up all of a sudden. Uh, and you're rolling out the network around the world. How have you found, you know, building a software company is a little bit easier because you just go out and like, a computer's a computer, right? How has it been adapting to different cultures, I guess, with Canary, like uh, you're putting a video camera in the home? Is it different? here as it is in the US. Uh, and the same with, I guess, putting products out there. Do people in Europe, are they more receptive to that kind of thing? I mean, it's a big question. Uh, it's al already like the first thing when you're an American company like we are, like explaining like Europe is not a country. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> and you go like, okay, that's, uh, that's Europe. It's not complicated, <laughs> it's complex. Yeah, hold, yeah. hold on. <laughs> and then you start talking about language, about usage. And yeah, you can see sometimes usage of certain products done in a different way. I mean, we, we have a, the thermostat for us was a different product in the US than it is in, in, in Europe. Sure. Uh, high voltage, low voltage, air versus water, and like completely right. different schemes. And the homes are different. Even when you do field trials and all those kind of things, you discover homes are different. Like when you look at radios, uh, when we have, you know, we have threads speaking between our products in the home, so you don't have just Wi-Fi. And for security, it's oh, very right. important. You don't rely just on Wi-Fi, but you just look at, you know, uh, emissions uh, height goes into like a uh, brick based homes like in Netherlands oh versus like uh, wood homes like in 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 the US so it's right you, you have certain particularities so yeah you need to adapt I think quite a bit you need to be agile. physical limitations I yeah. guess that you wouldn't yeah. think about and usage yeah. privacy as well you talk yeah. about privacy uh, even like regulators are, are behaving in completely different ways right uh, if you take uh, some countries in uh, in Europe some are really strict yep interesting huh. so I guess like uh, one big question would be, it seems like Internet of Things is the new gold rush, right? Everybody wants to connect the umbrella or it's uh, terrible name. shoes. Yeah, I know, it's terrible. Uh, there's all these random Internet of Things devices. Uh, do you think that uh, that's the, kind the of... The Internet of Umbrellas, though, internet is of the future. Oh, Internet, internet of Umbrellas. I mean, internet. sure, I can, get a, I can tweet when it's raining automatically. Um, do you think, I guess I asked this before, but do you think that uh, this is... Uh, helping the cause or harming it because it kind of just seems like borderline ridiculous how much stuff is getting connected right now. I would say that the products that we have here are quite reasonable but do you think that uh, it's going to keep happening like this or if it's, is it going to slow down and become less of a I guess crazy maelstrom of things? I think, there's a, I think it's important to recognize there's a difference between um, sometimes these overlap but there's a difference between products that are IoT products that are beneficial to consumers mm -hmm. and IoT products that are beneficial to the industry. Right. And even the connected umbrellas and, you know, uh, the devices that let you know your baby's diaper is dirty, you know, yeah, things yeah. that you don't that don't you don't really need, they actually are benefit they have a place right now okay. in, in the industry and they're they're beneficial in that the more you experiment with um, <laughs> machines that cut cucumbers like we just saw uh, in the last presentation or these these kind of experimental IoT devices like there's a lot of, of value in that for the industry because it's kind of the stupid ideas or the, the crazy ideas or the I don't really need that ideas right. that actually uh, can lead to a lot of great innovation for things that you do need. Um, so there's, there's a lot of benefit there. And then, but, but for consumers, there might not be benefit in those things yet. Um, but then there's devices that are, that are actually built right out of the gate to come out with cons for consumer benefit. And, um, and so I think it's, it's a double-edged sword in that some consumers view the entire industry as a little bit more of like, oh, that's, that's stuff that I might want, but it's not stuff I need. Okay. And so I think there's education there that needs to be done as far as uh, why some connected products actually are providing value mm. or how they're providing value. Um, but I wouldn't say that we are, uh, that it's, a ha it's harmful for us to have all the sure. other things because it's helping us. So I guess uh, one thing I'm thinking is like a lot of these, uh, the Internet of Things visions, I hate saying the word, it just sounds ridiculous, but um, it's connecting like street lights and everything to the Internet, basically. Yeah. Do you think that's a good idea? I think connected is not good enough. It's not good you enough? Know? I think connected, just being connected, if we just Doesn't achieve connectivity through like 
at, at the time where we're talking about algos, about deep learning, about in artificial intelligence connected is, is, is okay, but if you have to get all those objects and tell them what to do, when to do it, and how to do it, mm -hmm. you're back to square one, and your app sure. is only an on-off switch, pretty much, right? So if this is where you got to, that's very little. Right. at the end of the day. So to me, it's like how we can get also the consumer back in the equation and the consumer doesn't think about artificial intelligence but about something different, almost having a butler in your home for the case of Nest, right? Almost having like an intelligent assistance rather than the artificial intelligence, which is like the industry talking to itself. Right. So, so to me, it's like connectivity is, is nice, but okay, how you build some intelligence in the products that are now packed with sensors and have them do something when you need it most. Right. right, and yeah. and get those 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 actions or those scenarios that you were talking just before. Like that's what would enrich mm -hmm. people's life because again, it fits an on-off switch. And I think that I can totally relate to that. Uh, uh, the question you are asking is what's gonna IoT do for you? And IoT is the Internet of Things. It sounds really nice, and we it's around for 20 years, and we're trying to stick it on all kinds of things. So people think, say wearables is IoT. This is really not a thing. This is still for me as a human. Like it's sure. an interface, and um, uh, I think so. I, I think that the question is a bit wrong. I think what you should see is where should be IoT as as a puzzle piece in a larger solution. So, for instance, IoT in smart cities. Uh, in here in Amsterdam, we have these underground garbage containers. Now we're placing sensors in them that the the trucks get a message when the garbage co uh, containers needs to be emptied. Right. You don't get up in this situation where these garbage bags are around this container. So it's, it's not doing directly something for you, but it provides the data to make surfaces better for you and just increase your quality of life or something else. We've got three minutes left, so I'm going to put you on the spot and I'm going to ask you, what's the biggest common misconception about the Internet of Things? If there was one that you could bust right now, can you think of one? <laughs> I really put you on the spot. Is yeah. it time for people to buy devices? Is it safe to buy an Internet of Things device? Uh, I think I think there are there are great devices, but as John was saying, it's still early days. Uh, sure. I think the intersection between devices and what it will create will be the next stage uh, okay. in the adoption. But I think people will construct. I think for the home that we take look at for Nest is like people will build a home differently. My home will be different than yours, sure. and we'll build products. It, it will be constructed product by product. It's not like the single package. Nobody buys a smart home package. Nobody. Yeah. So it's really <laughs> product by product, yeah. and you build that. But then I think the, there, there are like the bigger mistakes. Well, there are some that are quite classical, like the battery of your phone dies, your home stops working. Yeah, it happened to me. <laughs> so wh why have, not, have you not thought about that, right? Yeah. Why do you rely entirely on, on this, and, and then everything stops when your, your cell is dead? So. Yeah. Um, so that's to me like the the one that's the ugly. Uh, you don't want to see that. Yeah. Nice. I think what you say. Nobody's gonna s build a smart home kit, buy a smart home kit. So uh, once you stop perceiving it at the Internet of Things, it's there, right? So if it's just a product, just a thermostat that's better, uh, and a, a, ho a house that makes you feel safer. I mean, that's eventually the proposition and a the product you're after. And then Internet of Things is just a puzzle piece, sure. something insignificant, uh, uh, and uh, and I think that's the place for Internet of Things to be. I like that. Yeah. I mean, it's it's absolutely the right time for all of us here and, and everyone yeah. that's <laughs> interested in building for it to keep doing that. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's maybe too early for the average consumer to go out sure. and deck out their house and their yeah, yeah. and their body with all connected <laughs> devices. Um, <laughs> but it's but it's a good time for people to uh, I think find a device that actually provides a value mm. um, and start there. If you start with a device that is uh, that is more novel or, or um, an or umbrella, yeah. If you start <laughs> with an umbrella, like I think it's it's easy for consumers to get turned off by it. Sure. Yeah. And so I, I think the best thing we can uh, we can do is or the consumer can do is really aim for something that's going to solve a problem because then it's going to gather more interest around oh what's possible and how it can provide value. Um, it's probably too early for, for us to start trying to connect everything together too soon. I tried it. Doesn't, um, doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I would say, like, I guess a thermostat or a little camera. Like, I, I started with a Canary and a Tato, and, like, being able to, you know, reduce my electricity bill and spy on my cat. I mean, sure, that's, like, kind of silly, the cat thing, but it is really cool as well, and you get it at that point. So it's, it's quite an interesting <laughs> proposition. 
Yeah. It's, fun, it's funny, like uh, we hear we hear from our users all the time that it's kind of like once you have that connection and information from your home, mm -hmm. um, it's almost like going from not having a smartphone to having a smartphone. Yeah. Like, how did I live without this? Yeah. Uh, it, it might not. It's not going to do that way with an umbrella, probably. Sure. But w with with a product that's actually providing a lot of like value and meaning, it does. It's that same thing. It's like wow. All of a sudden, I know what it feels like to have this connection, to have right. this information, and it's hard to imagine you not having that. I kind of feel like it's being trans transported somewhere. Like the first time I wired up my canary, I was like, whoa! I can actually like check out my house from like right. New Zealand. Uh, and I know everything's fine. I've been keeping an eye on my uh, daughters in Brooklyn. Oh, this that's week. amazing. It's been so nice. Yeah. I love the future. <laughs> we are completely out of time, uh, according to the clock. So uh, thank you all for listening. Uh, if you have any questions, you can probably hit us up on Twitter. It's all on the, uh, the next web schedule. Thank you very much. Yeah.